Hi, everyone. Hi, Slush. I'm Nara, co-founder of PAL, and we're here to shape the future of palliative care. This is Ingrid Ann. In 2019, she was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And the girl in the middle, leaning on her mom's shoulder, that's me. We lost her in November 2020, only a year after her diagnosis. During that year, my sisters and I took on the caregiving role. We navigated the world of palliative care alone and went on to make every mistake in the book. But our experience is no exception to the rule. It is the rule. Every year, close to 140 million people with a life-limiting illness rely on palliative care to ensure their comfort and quality of life. But an under-resourced healthcare system means that very few can access it. Right now, only one out of nine people in need get the care they deserve. This leads to overburdened family members, lower quality of life for patients, and inefficient healthcare. And this is only getting worse. The aging population and growing rates of serious illness create an urgent need for change. And we are here to be that change. PAL is an AI-driven digital care platform that enables at-home palliative care by empowering families. Our family-facing app was co-created with hundreds of patients and caregivers to tackle all their daily challenges. With an evidence-based symptom tracker, a dynamic care planner, and a practical library, families can collaborate, manage symptoms, and access support from diagnosis all the way through to the end of life. But that's not all. By giving these families a tool they love, we're collecting thousands of observational insights that are completely inaccessible by healthcare teams today. And in the very first solution of its kind, we'll leverage this data to predict complications and alert healthcare teams for earlier intervention. This means fewer emergency admissions, increased efficiency for our healthcare providers, and lower healthcare costs and ultimately, a better quality of life for both patients and their families. And this is why healthcare providers team up with us. By socially prescribing PAL, they refer new users to us on an ongoing basis. Right now, we're focused on scaling our distribution partnerships for sustainable growth. And while PAL is distributed by GPs and care organizations, we'll monetize through large healthcare and insurance providers. And with the cost of care at over 13,000 euros per patient in the final year of life, they stand to achieve significant savings with PAL. But I think I'm forgetting something. There, that's more accurate. We are on our way to transforming this 40 billion euro market, starting with late stage cancer patients with strong palliative needs. On top of my caregiving experience, I've spent years commercializing digital health tools. My co-founder, Assi, is a tech operator and the heart behind our product. William and Marcus bring over 40 years of tech and medical knowledge to PAL. We're backed by leading VCs and supported by great partners. And we just secured an 800,000 euro grant to bring PAL's prediction capabilities to life. We built something we hope you never use. But if you ever need us, here's Pal. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Nara. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Please feel free to start with the questions. Nara, many thanks for the great pitch. Um, maybe as a first question, can you make me walk us through again a classic or standard day of someone who is part of such a family situation? And can you map these daily tasks to the features that you guys have built out? Yeah, great question. So you can picture someone with a terminal diagnosis, typically late stage cancer would be the first use case that we're targeting. And the situation for them is upon the diagnosis, when they're informed that they have a terminal illness, they are then not automatically cared for by everyone in the healthcare system. Typically, they're discharged from the hospital after receiving treatment, and they're at home where their status is changing day by day. They're faced with de debilitating symptoms. Overnight, they might have complications, and it's a big burden both for the patients and the family members. 
what our features are helping them with is that we are telling them what they should be on the lookout for based on the app and the features there so that they can keep track of symptoms, they can share care tasks between themselves, also knowing what they should be doing, and they can access real-time content that's suitable for their symptoms, for their potential complications, and for their condition. And they can also very easily share this in consultations or otherwise with their healthcare team so that they can also intervene much earlier. Thank you, Nara. And uh, first of all, I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, Thank you. Really appreciate this. Walk us through how the collaboration with practitioners on the ground work as soon as you get eligible for more care. Are you even pulling another party as, as soon as you progress with the disease? Or, uh, is that mo mostly focused on the family working with uh, the patient in that sense? Yeah. So step one, what we have already completed, is was that our hypothesis was that we need to make use of the family members that are already there, because they can be a massive resource, not only for the patient, but of course also for the healthcare teams, which are completely overworked and do not really have time to do these non-critical care tasks. So that's step one that we've proven, that we can turn these family caregivers into more skilled and capable caregivers, and they take over non-critical care tasks. Now we're more into phase two of the approach, where we're now making it easier for clinicians to intervene so that we are onboarding the patients through the healthcare teams and they can access information and alerts about what is going on so that they can either send more home care nurses over there, uh, suggest treatment or other interventions to just stop any issues and complications and emergency admissions from happening. Thanks, really, really important work here. Um, just a question, like I saw the UK and maybe the Netherlands there as well, so do you integrate like quite locally into the healthcare system or, or how does that work or does the patient kind of have to source who do they need to call or who the caregiver is and so forth? Yeah. So a basic part of our platform is that it can be used anywhere because it uses basic uh, like universal palliative care principles. So that's already a big foundation of it. What we're doing now is that we're going into each market, which rightfully so is the Netherlands and the UK, and we're localizing both the content and other aspects of the platform, including integrations, to make it easier also for the local healthcare system. So we have, for example, content partnerships with local NGOs and charities and other um, yeah, uh, experts that we can use locally to help them access local resources. We also connect them easier to local resources and make sure that we uh, yeah, stick to the local guidelines in terms of what the healthcare system is requiring in each market. I guess then a uh, follow-up question to that, that, that kind of like, uh, does that make it faster to access that care or is it more easy for the caregivers then to understand what's going on or what's the kind of like magic trick there instead of just picking up the phone and calling someone. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely everything that you said. The problem today is that there's a lack of awareness and also a lot of taboo uh, like uh, surrounding the topic of palliative care, which is why so few people access it on time because they are either not requesting it or their doctors are not suggesting it because they do not know what is going on with these patients in their homes. So we are making it easier for not only the healthcare teams to get when a patient needs this in-person uh, palliative care, but we also make it easier for the patients and the family members to request it. And this is feedback we've gotten from multiple users that were perhaps not the traditional use case to be introduced or referred to palliative care, and they've shown their symptoms and shown their needs, and they have been referred to actual in-person palliative care teams as a result of our app, which makes them more stable and happier patients in their own homes. All right. Thanks a lot, Nora. Thank you so much for your Thanks time. Thanks a lot for the Thank questions. You.